The Awakening, the revised edition by Lilac Moo. 33, A New Life in Zephyr Springs. As the door slid closed to their bedroom, Padme set the baby monitor on the bedside table before sitting down at her vanity to brush out her long curls. This was their first night in their own bedroom, for the house had been furnished this afternoon. For the last couple of nights, they'd all slept on futons in the living area in the front of the fireplace, with Jaden in the bassinet beside them. Padme put her brush down as she watched her husband undress down to his underneath shorts. Anyway, the next morning. Anakin delved deeply into the embrace of the Force as he meditated with his daughter by the fire early that morning. He did this with both of his children separately, usually with Luke first around 5am. Then he sent Luke off to his morning laps with Ahsoka, while he and Leia spent a little time together and he taught her the basics of meditation. She was also learning the basics of lightsaber training on the weekends, but they enjoyed their meditation time together the most. Relaxation was one thing that had had escaped Leah in the last few years, as the stress of her duties as a princess of the rebellion were usually overwhelming. But thanks to the meditation techniques her father had taught her, she now had a way to ease the stress that often plagued her, as she was still highly involved with the Alliance meetings, as were Anakin and Padme now. They opened their eyes and smiled at each other. Now that I'm all relaxed, I'm starving, Leia said. Anakin chuckled. <laughs> Me too. He replied, And that's good because breakfast is ready, and if I know Luke, he'll come barreling in here any minute. I can already hear his stomach, Padme said as she came into the living room holding Jaden, as she gently rubbed his back, attempting to get a burp out of him. It was no sooner that she finished saying the words that Luke came in through the front doors with Ahsoka. Morning, ma'am, he said as he kissed her cheek. Morning, sweetie, breakfast is on the table. Padme replied, Thanks, I'm starved, Luke said as he hurried off to the kitchen. Ahsoka chuckled and joined him, just as they heard Jaden burp. There we go, Padme cooed to him. I can take him for a while, Mum, Leia said. Thanks, sweetie, Padme replied as she took her baby brother into the kitchen and gave her parents a few moments alone. Anakin wrapped his arms around her waist and kissed her lips tenderly. Morning, handsome. She cooed sultrily. Good morning, beautiful. He cooed back as their lips met again. Leia seems relaxed, Padme mentioned. She really enjoys our meditation. I have to admit that it's very soothing and calming, even though I used to hate it when I was a part of one. Anakin replied. I'm so glad you two have become so close, Padme said. You have become close to Leia too, and Luke. Anakin replied. I know, but Leia is Daddy's little girl. Just like I knew she would always be. And that makes me feel really good, Padme said. He smiled. Me too. She's my little princess. He replied, smiling with pride. Anakin removed his smoke goggles as he finished fusing the part back into place and closed the hood of the speeder. That should do it. See if she'll turn on, R2, Anakin called as the faithful little droid pressed the ignition switch. The engine roared to life, now purring in a working hum. When Alan had brought it in, that hadn't been the case at all. Wow, your wife wasn't kidding. You really work magic on anything, machine, Alan said. Anakin just shrugged. What others praised as a gift he had was just something he had always been good at. Something that had been determined whether he ended up working in a junk shop when he was a slave for there could have been places they could have put him that would have been much worse. Fixing things had once been about survival, for being owned by Watto was far better than existing in being owned by the Huts. It's just something I've always been good at, Anakin said. Good is an understatement, Alan replied as he dropped some credits into Anakin's head. This is too much, Anakin said. Keep it, you've got kids after all, Alan replied. Anakin nodded graciously. Thank you, he said, as he turned and got into his speeder before driving off. Anakin looked at the credits in his hand. It was the first time he had earned money that he didn't have to give to Watto, or that he didn't get from the council for travel expenses. 
He understood why the Jedi had a rule against owning anything. But earning money and being able to keep it to use to provide for his family made him feel like a real husband and a real father. He knew Padme would insist that even if he was still a Jedi and couldn't make any money, that it wouldn't make him any less of a father or a husband in her eyes. But it always had made him feel like less of a man, and men like Rush Clovis always made it a point to remind everyone that he couldn't give Padme all the things that Rush could. Not that Padme cared about material things in the slightest. She made it perfectly clear to him every day that she only wanted and needed his love which he was more than happy to give her in abundance. But just for once, he would have liked to surprise her with a gift. And that's when it struck him. A ring. He had always wanted to give her a wedding ring, and had never been able to do so. She had always insisted that it didn't matter to her, but it had always mattered to him. That's what he would do now, that he could. He would save his credits, and then buy her a beautiful ring to surprise her with. With that thought, he smiled and went back to work. Alan had spread the word, and he already had many customers, which meant he would have enough money to buy a ring in no time. Ryan put his fork down as he finished, chewing, You weren't kidding! I've never had cloudberry pie that good before! Ryan said, I told you, Leia replied. The pie's wonderful, Mrs Skywalker, Ryan complimented. Thank you, Ryan. I'm glad you liked it, Padme replied, as she was busy packing her lunch into a picnic basket. She was taking lunch to Anakin and Luke, and taking Jaden along with her. Well, I think that's everything, Padme said as she plucked Jaden out of his high chair. Let's go get you ready, sweetheart, Padme cooed to him. Do you need any help taking anything out to your speeder? Ryan offered. I've got it for you, Miss Padme. Han said as he came in, seemingly out of nowhere. Padme watched the two young men eye each other, and noticed that her daughter didn't seem to notice the two men staring at each other for a moment. It seemed her daughter had two young men interested in her, even though Han had yet to show or admit any such attraction. Thank you, Han, she replied, as she allowed him to take the basket out to her speeder, while she went to get Jaden ready for their outing. Since he had opened the shop within the last days, many patrons of the town had walked by and curiously peeked in to get a glimpse of their town's newest citizens. But it seems like many young women were amorously curious about the father-son team. Or so it seemed when Padme arrived. She parked the speeder just outside and spied a few young women loitering around the shop. She shook her head in amused annoyance as they giggled and whispered among themselves. She was used to this, or rather, she should have been, being that she was married to a very handsome, attractive man. But she had yet to get used to the fact that their son took very much after his father. She, of course, wanted her son to find a nice girl to settle down with someday. But she wasn't sure these giggly airheads were candidates she would prefer for her baby boy. She plucked Jaden from his speeder seat and picked up the picnic basket before walking past the girls. Their frowns almost made her laugh aloud, for they really didn't like to acknowledge that one of the objects of their ogling was very happily married. Ah! Jaden called, pointing his tiny finger at his father. Anakin smiled as he removed his safety glasses and grabbed a rag to wipe his dirty hands. Hey, handsome, we thought we'd bring lunch, Padme said as she kissed him tenderly. Great, I'm starved and happy to see you both. He replied as their lips parted. Their kiss had become a topic of hushed whispering conversation between the girls just outside the shop. I don't know why they keep hanging around here. Luke is too shy to go and talk to any of them, so I thought they'd lose interest in him, Anakin mentioned as he washed his hands. He's not the only one they're interested in, Padme replied as he took Jaden from her when she started taking things out of the picnic basket. What do you mean? Anakin asked in confusion. She smiled at her husband's obliviousness. She really was the only woman he saw, and their wedding vows really did mean everything to him, just like they did to her. She was a very lucky woman to have such a devoted, loving husband. Well, sweetie, I think they're crushing on Luke, but they're also crushing on you, she told him gently. He scoffed, 
But I'm married to you. Wouldn't that kind of be a waste of their time? Anakin asked. Yes, but to them, they're the type that would hope to tempt you away from me. Padme replied. He scoffed. Yeah, like that would happen. Besides, they're Luke's age. I'm 20 years their senior. Anakin said, but you don't look like you are. You may be Luke's father, but you look like you could be his slightly older brother. Padme replied. He shook his head. Like it matters, because I am fully 100% devoted to my beautiful wife. I.e. you. He said as he pecked her lips. She smiled. Oh no, which makes me the luckiest woman in the galaxy. She replied as they shared another kiss. Ooh, cloudberry pie! Thanks, Mum! Luke said as he grabbed a fork and began eating what was left of the half of a pie she had bought. Hey, you better save some for us, Anakin said. Padme shook her head in amusement and produced another whole pie from the basket. You didn't really think I'd only bring half a cloudberry pie, did you? I know my boys better than that. Padme said as they sat down and began eating their sandwiches. The loitering girls outside, thanks to Padme's glare, had finally left and they enjoyed lunch together. Master Kenobi, it is good to see that you are well. General Dodona greeted, as his hologram shimmered to life. Obi-Wan and Satine nodded curtly. Lady Satine, I see you are well also. The General agreed. Yes, General, thank you. Satine replied. And the little one? He asked curiously. Satine smiled. Annie is also well. Full of energy, as always. Satine said. The aging general chuckled. Oh, she should be. I must say, we were all deeply worried when we heard that Cad Bane had discovered you on Naboo. Dodona said. Yes, we were very fortunate to all escape safely. Kane and Fett are still out there, but Anakin killed Aura soon. Everyone replied. Good. One less scum bounty hunter, the better. I trust you have found somewhere safe? He asked. Quite safe, and secluded. Obi-Wan replied. How is the construction of the new base coming along? Satine inquired. Slower than we'd like, but that's to be expected on this ice ball of a planet. That is why I called, though. We are calling a meeting of the Alliance leaders at 9am, which is about four hours from now. The general informed them. That will be about 8pm our time. We'll be waiting for your transmission. I trust that you would like Satina and myself present, as well as Anakin and Padme? Obi-Wan asked. Yes, and Princess Leia as well. I was informed by Rush Clovis that he wished to leave General Skywalker out, as he refused to recognise him as a senior council member. Fortunately, many disagree with his stance. The general informed Obi-Wan shook his head. Why is that allowed to even involved in our meetings? He's hardly shown a history of being trustworthy. Obi-Wan said, I'm inclined to agree with you, but Mon Mothma believes his political insight and resources are invaluable. The general replied. Obi-Wan scoffed. She means his wealth is invaluable. Obi-Wan clarified. Yes, but I am not worried about Rush pushing General Skywalker around. He and Lady Skywalker have proved they are quite capable of putting him in his place. Dodonna mused. Obi-Wan and Satine shared a chuckle, remembering Padme's last tirade against the foolish former senator. It was an interesting and welcome thing for Obi-Wan to watch his former Padawan remain calm-tempered, even when someone like Rush Clovis was spouting insult at him and making ridiculous advances on his wife. And it was amusing to watch Padme verbally tear him a new one, all without losing her temper too. Yes, they'll have no trouble handling Clovis. We'll see you in a few hours, General. May the Force be with you. Obi-Wan said. And you, Master Jedi, Dodonna said as his hologram faded. Clovis certainly has a lot of nerve. Can't we kick him off the Alliance Council? Satine asked. We should be able to, but for some reason Mon Mothma has the final word on everything. Obi-Wan replied. I still haven't quite figured that out either. She has a little too much power for my tastes, and I know Padme agrees. If we put too much power into one person's hands, then how are we any better than the Empire? Satine asked. Obi-Wan looked at his wife. She was right, of course. I agree with you, and if something happened to Mothma, Clovis would be said to succeed her upon her current wishes. 
Obi-Wan said. That's what I'm worried about, Satine replied. That was a delicious meal, as always, Padme, Obi-Wan complimented. Thank you, Padme replied. You have to teach me how to cook, Satine said. Any time, Padme replied, as Anakin kissed her forehead. I'm stuffed, which is quite an accomplishment, Anakin said as he smiled. No joke, though. I could never keep you fed when you were growing up, Obi-Wan said, only half joking. That's because everything you tried to cook tasted like feet. If it hadn't been for the temple's decent cafeteria food, I would have probably starved to death. Anakin joked back. You are so funny, Obi-Wan said sarcastically. Well, we all need a laugh because we'll all be ticked off once this meeting is over. Anakin grumbled. Most do not share Rosh's opinion of you. Quite the opposite, in fact. Obi-Wan assured him. Obi-Wan is right. Rush Clovis can go to Sith Hell for all I care. And I still don't know why we let him have as much say as we do. If no one agrees with his opinion, then why are we the only ones beside General the Donner that stand up to him? Padme wondered. Monomoth trusts him for some reason, and that seems to make him somewhat untouchable. That and the fact that his planet provides funding out of resources. Obi-Wan said. Still, that doesn't make it right for he and Mon to have a totalitarian type control over the Alliance. We'll be no better than the Empire if we keep allowing that, Padme said. I agree, Satine said as R2 made the hologram connection and the Alliance members' holograms came before them. It's good to see all of you again, General Dodonna greeted as he sat down at the council table. I thought I was clear that this meeting was for senior council members. Which does not include Skywalker, Rush said. It most certainly does include General Skywalker. He commands the Alliance fleet after all. Or have you forgotten his key role in the destruction of the Death Star already? Everyone asked. Please, gentlemen, we have much business to attend to. Mon interjected. Oh, of course. Our first order of discussion is the intelligence we have managed to gather from Coruscant, Clovis said. Yes, and according to our spies, the Emperor has commissioned the construction of the Death Star too, and has ordered it to be completed as quickly as possible, Dodonna explained. We believe this one will be ready in just a few years, Mon added. The last one took over 16 years to complete. Do they really think they could build another one in such a short amount of time? Satine asked. They seem to think so. Rush replied, do we know where they're building it? Anakin asked. No, but there are rumours that they are also taking precautions to make sure incoming enemy ships cannot fire onto it. They're building a shield around it to protect it, and we don't know how it will be operated, or where it will be operating from. Rush said, They're trying to keep you out. Obi-Wan mused to his old Padawan. Maybe, but if we are able to figure out where it is and where they're operating the shield from, we can't take action against it. Anakin said, Not so fast, flyboy, because we have no idea where that is. They're keeping it very secret. We've lost all our spies. They died in getting what little information we have to us. Rush said, This keeps happening. No one we send in ever comes out alive. Mon said, That's because Vader figures them out. It's possible the people we've sent in don't have strong enough mind shields. Anakin said, Excuse me, but I've handpicked all our spies. They are the best in the business, Rush snapped. Apparently not, Anakin retorted. Besides, it doesn't matter how good they are. With Vader, not even some Jedi can keep their thoughts completely to themselves. Anakin said, What about your clone friend? That one who defected to our side? Mon asked. Anakin shook his head. No, we'd be sending Rex to his death. He may have defected, but all clones complete a bioscan each time they check in. His operating number would show up immediately, and they would know it was him. Anakin replied, Then we must continue to seek out people that we believe may have a chance of infiltrating the Imperial ranks. Mon suggested, As for the base, we'll be up and running very soon, and we can begin to monitor Imperial activity much better. I suggest we plan on having you visit in the next couple of months. Dodona suggested, 
We all plan a trip, Obi-Wan replied. The general nodded. I believe this concludes our meeting. Mon said, Pardon me? May I speak with you, please, in private? Rush said, No. Anything you need to say to me can be said in the presence of my husband. Padme replied, I'm concerned for your safety and the safety of your children. Rush began, Thank you, but we're perfectly safe with Anakin. Padme replied, Not with the sizable bounty on his head. You and your kids would be much safer if you would come to the base. Rush suggested. Anakin shook his head. This guy had a lot of nerve. You mean without me? Anakin questioned. If you love them, then you would agree that they are not safe with you. Rush replied. Anakin shook his head. You're a real piece of work, Clovis. Believe me. I'm perfectly capable of protecting my family, and I'll die before I let any harm come to them. And your attempts to woo my wife are pathetic. Just like you. Anakin spat back. My husband is right. Now, if you're quite done wasting our time, we're going to check on our baby. Padme said Rush's face immediately soured. He had heard that Padme had given birth to another one of the Jedi's brats. It sickened him that a woman like Padme allowed that Jedi to defile her. Fine, then I bid you goodbye and hope to see you soon, Padme, Rush said sourly as the transmission ended. Padme sighed in frustration. I swear he is going to meet my right hook the next time I see him, Padme growled. Anakin smirked. I'd love to see that, Anakin replied as they started for the stairs. But Padme shook her head and then wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him as passionately as ever. I love you so much and you're the only man I'll ever love. That arrogant bastard can go to Sith hell for all I care. Padme whispered to him. Anakin smiled. I know. I don't let him get to me because I know he's just jealous that he can't have you. Anakin replied as he kissed her tenderly. She giggled as he picked her up and spun her around. You're all mine, he said. She pressed her forehead to his. Forever, she promised, as they heard Jaden on the baby monitor. Someone is awake from his nap, Padme said, as they heard him make a sharp call, which both made them smile. He didn't like to be ignored. Someone is hungry, Anakin said. Come on, let's go spend time with our baby. Padme replied as they ascended the stairs together. In the next chapter, approximately three years have passed, and the Skywalkers, their family and friends, prepare to make another visit to Hoth. Many things have happened in the last three years, and Vader continues to search for them. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Pretty darn good one, though admittedly, Rush Clovis bad I'll watch himself. But then again, what else is new? Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.